Thank you, the Most High God, for life, food, clothing, and shelter, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Thanking the creator of heaven and earth for us being here. And I pray that the Most High God will keep us all safe and protected. We give glory unto his high and holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you, the Most High God, for my life, the life of Kobe, Yisrael, scattered in the four corners of the earth. Thanking the creator for sustaining us, for um, food, clothing, and shelter, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Thanking the creator for allowing us to be here today, that he um, kept us all safe, and that we, um, even the things that we take for granted, that he grants to us, we have water to drink, clean water. No, you got people that have water, but they can't drink it because it's contaminated, it has some sort of stuff in it, and they got to they gotta mix the water with something else in order to clean it up, for, in order for them to drink it. You know, you go any part of the world right now, Sometimes you go to some parts of the world, you can't, you not being a native, you can't drink that water. You get sick. You be sitting on the toilet all day, you know. You got to drink bottled water or you, got, you have to boil the water. So thank God that we able to have water. Some people right now are sitting somewhere wishing that they had one of those little nips of water, just that, to sustain them for the day. And... Sometimes we see those nips, they be, they got this much water left in it and it ain't but this big. We got a bunch of water left in it. At least two thirds of the water left in it. So that means we waste where other people look at things and they cherish them more. And they appreciate it more. That's what we begin to see in today's um, lesson in the um, Sidra where we talk about they started digging wells. You know, they started going around digging wells. Isaac stopped going around digging wells and redigging the wells that his father um, dug before because of the precious commodity that water is. Water is a precious commodity, and you can't take that for granted. We could go on without food for a long time, but we can't go without water for a long time. You could go without food for a long time. You go on a liquid diet and actually survive. But... Um, you know, um, if you try to do that, you try to cut that water out, you're not going to make it. You could gorge yourself, you could eat, but if you don't have something to drink after a while, you could, eating is not going to be pleasant. <laughs> That's right, it's not going to be pleasant because water is a source of life. It helps us. You know, so let's not take the little things for granted. Let's not take... Um, what God gives us for granted. Let's not take life for granted. I want to, um, like I, I said in the prayers, reiterate once again, our condolences go out to the family of our brother Akazia, the family of, of um, our brother Aish Zaquin, and to the family of our sister Tashua. Um, Y'all might know her by other name, but I don't want to say her other name. You know, but Tashua, if you know Malek, um, Prince Yiftak's son, well, her, uh, his mother, her sister passed away, um, her twin. So we pray that the Most High God would bless them all, even in their time of loss, that the Most High God would strengthen them. You know, losing someone is not easy. It's not, um, it's not an easy thing. And sometimes... Um, you know, people, elders are different because they be ready to go. When they get to a certain stage in life, they be like, I already had my run at it. You know, it's like retiring. Mm -hmm. Look, I have my run at life. Let's go. I was, I was this morning, just this morning, I was thinking about Prince Jerry O with his um, Ema. And he said that his Ema said, is, you know, Ema Sarah, if you knew her, she had a, a sense of humor. And she was all witty and... Ima Sarah going to always, she going to be at a party, she going to dance, you know, she going to have a good time. And, she, and he said that, she told him, well, I've been talking to the Lord and I've been praying to the Lord and asking him to take me, but he must not be listening to my prayers because he ain't take me yet. If you knew Ima Sarah, you knew that that was, that was her, you know. May the most high God bless her memory. So 
a lot of times elders, they, they understand, they know it's time, you know, I already have my, my time here on earth. It's time for me to go, right? It's sometimes us that try to hold on to them longer than what, than what they should. And um, that's why they say, bring me home. I don't want to pass away in a hospital. No, I want to be in the comfort of my home. It's, a, it's something that's comforting behind that with your family around you. No matter what home is, home could be a little shanty town in somewhere in a, in a remote area in Africa. That's home. Take me there so I could be comfortable and I could, and I could spend my last days there. Around my family. This is, this is life. Life, we live, we pass away. We got to prepare ourselves. Abraham showed us what preparation is. Our great father showed us what we should do when, it's that, when that time comes. Prepare, make sure you have everything in order so that we don't fall by the wayside and we start looking for GoFundMe's and all types of stuff. Get, get, your, get your stuff in order. Get your stuff in order. We, we appreciate that the Most High God has given us this time and this moment to be in each other's company, to every seventh day we could come out and we could hear the word of God and we hear it from different perspectives because no one perspective is all the same. People see things that you don't see in the portion and they expound on that, and that's a blessing. That's a blessing in itself. So I'm thankful to the Most High God for my many teachers that I've had throughout the years that have taught me and that have expounded on this word so that you might be able to build your intellect and build your understanding of Torah, which is important because above all you're getting, you got to get understanding. Right. If you don't have understanding, then listen, all the knowledge that you have means, no, means nothing because you can't apply it. The understanding is the application of, of, of the wisdom and the, and, and the knowledge that you gain. The understanding is un, like somebody comes in that has hoary head, you stand up. The understanding is a hoary head is, is, is coming out the door, not to slam that door in their face. Mm -hmm. But stand there for a second, hold that door, and make sure that they make it out. That's the understanding. Ma'am, I seen a video where the guys jumped out the car. The lady couldn't make it across the street. It was busy intersection. It was busy. They stopped their car in the middle of traffic. Mm -hmm. They ran to her and they said, you need help? They picked her up. One picked her up. The other one grabbed the cart that she had and brought it across the street. She wasn't going to make it. Mm -hmm. Even if it was a long light, she wasn't going to make it. And you know, you always have crazy people. You know, people... Listen, they be an elder, they be honking their horn. Beep, 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 beep. Especially here in New York, you're going to get that. You're going to get that. So that's commendable. That's the application and that's the understanding of Torah. That, that precept doesn't just mean when someone walks into a room that has gray hair, you stand up. That means that you have to respect that. Because they've been here longer than you and they might be able to teach you something that you don't know. And most of the times, that's how life is. You know, each one teach one. You pass it down. You know how many elders have died with certain type of understanding and knowledge that no one else picked up? My grandfather used to fix boat engines and 18-wheeler um, en engines. He used to have a shop. I was too little. I was too young. But none of his sons picked that up. Can you imagine if you know how to fix trucks and boats? Engines, you could work anywhere, anywhere in the world, mm -hmm. because everywhere in the world they have what boats, and they have trucks. Right. So you go with that knowledge anywhere and, and be able to survive. So, you know it's important. So today, young brother Elimelech is supposed to be the Moftir, but he's not. He's on vacation. The family's on vacation. I hope that the Most High God. Be with my brother Moray Arani and his family, that he protects them, and as he got them there safely, that he will return them back safely. So we're going to go into the book of um, Malachi. Mm -hmm. He's one of the prophets, so he got to be on this side. In 
the old, I think in the in the Old Testament in the King James version, that's the last book. Mm. In the King James version. But in our book is the last of the of the prophets, the not the um Nevi'im. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be the last book. And and the Holy Scriptures, the last book is the second book of Chronicles. Mm -hmm. So um the book of Malachi, we go into Malachi chapter one, verse one. All the way to chapter 2, verse 7, I believe. Let's go. We're in the book of Malachi, starting from chapter 1, verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The burden of the word of Yehovah to Israel by Malachi. So the prophet Malachi is a post-exilic prophet. He's at least 100 years after the Babylonian captivity. So when you hear pre-exilic or you hear post-exilic, those are just fancy words for people to say, Pre-exilic meaning before the exile right. to Babylon. Post means after the exile in Babylon. So when you hear, sometimes you hear people speak and they and they throw those things out there. And you be like, what do they mean by that? That's all that means. Mm -hmm. Pre means before. Post means after. The pre-game show is what? Before the game, right? Mm -hmm. The post-game show is what? After the game. That's all. They, they just using big words and not even big words. It's just things to try to make you confused, but that's all it means, all right? So he was, a, he was a prophet that came after the Babylonian captivity. He was at least 100 years after the Babylonian captivity. So it shows you that we've been through Babylon. Some of the things and the, the understandings that we've gotten has been somewhat tampered. This is, this is the part that a lot of people don't like to admit to, but when we come out of Babylon, we coming out with certain, certain things that we didn't have before Babylon. Uh, we come out of Babylon with Babylonian names for calendars. Mm -hmm. Instead of Abib, now we saying Nisan. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We got a month named Tammuz, which is the name of a, of a, of a foreign god. You know, the, we come out of Babylon with these things. We come out of Babylon with with the script of Hebrew that we read right now, what they call modern Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, we're, we're using a, a, what we call the, the ancient Hebrew, mm -hmm. right? But out of Babylon, we come out of th with this Hebrew that we see, which is Aramaic in form. You know, you could kind of understand, you know, that, that kind of like Aramaic language or whatever. And, and, but now we coming into this post-exilic period. So somewhat certain things have been touched. Right. And we've added certain things to the actual Torah. You know what I mean? Which if we look at Torah in its purest sense, we're not supposed to add anything to it or right. diminish anything from it. Let's go. I have loved you, saith Jehovah. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Uh -huh. Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith Jehovah? Yet I loved Jacob, but Esau I hated. And made his mountains a desolation and gave his heritage to the jackals of the wilderness. So very important. Straight out the bat. Now most Sidrot and Haftarot have a, a common theme. Right. This is why it was paired the way that it was. Mm -hmm. Right? Certain um Hafta, certain Sidro and Haftarot go together mm -hmm. because there's a certain point that connects them. Right. So most of the times. You know, young people, young men, young women, when, you, when you're going through these portions, you, you often have to read both. Right. You can't just read the Hop Torah and not read the, the Sidra because then you're going to miss the connecting point. Right. So the connecting point is in the Hop Torah sometimes it's at the very beginning, sometimes it's in the middle, sometimes it's in the end. It just so happened that this connecting point is at the very beginning. So when we look at the Sidra, we're talking about Esau and Jacob. Right. And, uh, and, and when we go back and we talk about Esau and Jacob, there's one very important point that it makes about Esau and Jacob. They said, and it said, and, and Rebecca loved Jacob and, 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 um, and Isaac loved Esau. Could be reversed. It could have been one, the first. I think it says Isaac loved Esau and Rebecca loved Jacob, mm -hmm. Right? So now, does it mean that because Rebecca, because Isaac um, loved Esau, that he didn't love Jacob? No. 
No, but he saw something in Esau that really, really, really he loved, mm -hmm. right? He was his boy, and not only that, he was his firstborn. Mm -hmm. The next thing was that, oh, my bad, my bad. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I'm going to stay off of that topic because Prince Jeriel, <laughs> Prince Jeriel is the teacher. So I'm going to simplify it. So the love, we're going to stick to the love. So, so prior to, <laughs> all right, so the, we're going to stick to the love. So we see that one is, one is loved by the father, one is loved by the mother. But here the Most High God shows who he loves. Right. So sometimes the choices that we, that we make or we think about, we think that some men think that their woman can't tell them anything. Mm. But in reality, Rivka had the actual sense of what was supposed to be. Because at the end, now when we get to the prophecy, the Most High God tells us who he really loves. He said he loved Jacob. He said, but Esau, he hated. And from the beginning, that's where the Most High God showed Rivka who the blessing was going to come through. And I'm going to just leave it at that because if, if I go any further, I'm going to be into, his, into Prince Jeriel's lesson. Let us go. Whereas Edom said, we are beaten down, but we will return and build the waste places. Thus saith your whole of hosts. They shall build, but I will throw down. Uh -huh. And they shall be called the board of wickedness. And the people whom Yehoah execrated forever. Uh -huh. And your eyes shall see and ye shall say, Yehoah is great beyond the border of Israel. So the Most High God destroyed destroy Mount Seir. Mm -hmm. Right? Which the Edomites took from the Horites, but they taught to build and to, and to keep up. But the Most High God said he will destroy. That's how much of the hate that the Most High God had for them because um, Edom were... Um, a thorn by our side through our history. Right. They didn't have any love for us. Mm -hmm. So the Most High God said, you go think to build, but in you thinking to build, I'm the ultimate builder and I'm the destroyer. I'm going to destroy. Right. So as lofty as Edom got, the Most High God brought them down. Mm. Let us go. Verse 6. A son honoreth his father, Amen. and a servant his master. Amen. If then I be a father, where is my honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? The, the, now the history takes a turn. He's, God is off of Edom now. Mm -hmm. Now he's concentrating on us. Remember, post-exilic period, we adding things to the book. We adding things that, that the Most High God had didn't command us. Yeah. And we're coming out and we're out, of, we're out of Babylon for at least 100 years. Mm -hmm. And now the Most High God is saying, A son honor his father and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? Because children are supposed to honor and respect their parents. Am I right or wrong? That's right. It says, and if I be a master, where is my fear? Uh -huh. Because the fear of the master is that he could give you lashes in those times. So if I be a master, where is my fear? Let's go. Those are rhetorical questions. Let's go. Say if your whole post, unto you, O priest, that despise my name. Uh -huh. And you say... Where have we despised thy So the Most High God is making an accusation against the priests of that time. He said, y'all despise my name. And why? Why is he saying that? Hmm. Ye offer polluted bread upon mine altar. Uh -huh. And you say, wherein have we polluted thee? He said, wherein have we polluted thee? God said, you offered bread that's not fit upon my altar. Meaning you're putting offerings up there that are not acceptable by me. Let us go. And that you say the table of Yahweh is contemptible. So the table of Yahweh is contemptible. We could do whatever we want to do. Let us go. And when you offer the blind for sacrifice, it is no evil. Uh huh. And when you offer the lame and sick, it is no evil. Uh huh. Present it now unto thy governor. Uh huh. Will he be pleased with thee, or will he accept thy person? Say if Yahweh holds. It says, you in your own mind formulated. Remember what I said earlier. Don't add unto my word and don't diminish off from it. The priest began to accept any kind of offering that came before them and said, just put it up there. Or they would take the lame animals, they would take the lame animals, put them on the altar, and the good ones keep them for themselves. 
This is what began to happen. You begin to cut corners. You begin to say God understands. These are all the things that our people do today. They say God understands. What does God understand? You tell me what God understands. Because he said that his thoughts are not like our thoughts. So what does God understand? A lot of time we get caught up on, on um, you know, how, how many degrees or something someone has. And the most high God don't necessarily get caught up on that. Because you can have a million degrees and, and, be, and be wicked. Right. But the most high God, when, when the, even Shemuel, when he came before Jesse's sons, he said, surely must be this one. Right. So look how he looks. He looks fit. He works out. He does this. He does that. He said, went through all of them. He said, none of them. You don't have another son? And there was the shepherd boy, the one that was out there tending to the, to the animals. He was in a humble state. David was in a humble state. So he would have the understanding of how to lead a people because he knew how to care for animals. That's the one that God chose. Not the one that look good, not the one that work out, not the one that do push-ups on top of the bar. Mm -hmm. You know, the, you ever see the guys, they come up, they do a pull-up, and then they get up here and they go like this. Mm -hmm. And then they come down and then they mm -hmm. turn their leg, said, surely that must be the guy. Right. Said, nah, it wasn't that guy. That guy, David, not going to waste his time doing that. He going to get nice with the bow and arrow. Mm -hmm. He going to get a stone and be able to throw it and knock your head off. I'm 100 feet away. So sometimes we look for the accolades and we look for this and we look for that. And sometimes it's not in that. Most of our teachers didn't have that. Most of our teachers didn't come from that. The Most High God put it in them. Gave them that understanding to, to enlighten us. To be able to tell us um, which way to live and how to guide our lives. And that's a blessing. Now, I'm not telling you don't go get your degrees and stuff like that. I'm not downplaying that. What I'm saying is we don't know who the most high God might choose. Bill Gates is a college dropout. And he became the richest man in the world. They didn't finish school. Steve Jobs didn't finish school either. Shalom. The most high God put something in you that's beyond whatever man could teach you. You understand what I'm telling you? The Most High God puts something in us sometimes that, that's beyond what man could teach us. Right. And you become a blessing to the world. Now, I'm not telling you not to go to school. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is when you special, you special. And God going to put that on you one way or the other. You special, you special, and you're going to flourish whether you got 1,500 degrees or not. That's the way God works. Because no one expected the runt, the shepherd boy, to be king. Mm -hmm. And he became king. No one expected that. Let us go. Verse 9. And now I pray you, entreat the favor of Yah, that he may be gracious unto us. This has been of your doing. Will he accept any of your persons? So, we can't just come to God with any and everything. Because we won't even give that to to orange man that's in office right now, that's about ready to take the seat right now. Mm -hmm. he, he come to your house, you, you, you won't even give that to him. Exactly. You won't even go get a package. Of, you make sure you got, I, I need some live kills. Make sure that this, this is fresh. Mm -hmm. So how much more the creator? We can't, we can't shortchange the creator. We got to give him what's his due. Right. We got to give him his due. Let us go. Say if your whole host, oh, that there were even one among you that would shut the doors. Uh -huh. That you might not kindle fire on my altar in vain. Uh -huh. I have no pleasure in you, say if your whole host. Neither will I accept an offering that It says hand. there one among you that would just shut this garbage down. Mm -hmm. Because we think that God depends on just what we offer up to him. God said, if I were hungry, I wouldn't tell you. He said the cattle upon a thousand hills belong to me. So I wouldn't tell you. I wouldn't tell you that I'm hungry. God says there one amongst you that has enough courage to just say, shut these doors down because what you're doing is, is despicable before the most high God. Mm. With these vain oblations, right. 
and presenting these, these offerings before the Father that are not acceptable. And then you wonder, you say to yourself, right? You brought that table to your place of worship that you know got that shaky leg, but because you, you're taking all your old furniture out your house and, you, and you're remodeling your house, you give your place of worship the leftover stuff. So you give the table with the, with the shaky leg mm. to, the, to the place and people start putting stuff up there and then the, 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 the leg give way. That's what it's talking about. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. I'm not saying you can't offer something up to the place, but let it be in good condition. Let it be in tip-top shape. Let it be, yeah, preferably new, like my brother said. Mm -hmm. Brother Daniel said. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, you got people that donate things that are in, in great condition. Sometimes, like, you have a bunch of things. Or you get gifted a bunch of things. You might have used it once. You clean it good, and you be like, I don't got no use for this. I know at the camp they got use for this. That's good. That's great. But don't send us your TV that you know wasn't working when you left your house. You got to stick a pencil inside the power um, thing for it to, to start or to power on. Come on, man. You wouldn't even keep that for yourself. Why would you give it to God? That's what it's talking about. Let us go. Verse 11. For from the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, my name is great among the nations. You hear that? From the east to the west, his name is great amongst the nations. And keep on. Keep reading. And in every place, orphans are presented unto my name, even pure oblations. But my name is great among the nations, saith Yehovah. But most high God said in every place, Offerings are presented for his, before his name. That means that we're not the only people that's offering up to God. Let's not get it twisted. He gave Israel a specific order, a command on how to do it, but there's people out there, remote tribes, that we think they praying to a different God. they just saying Yehovah in a different language. Mm. And they offering up perfect offerings before him. So don't, God said, don't get it twisted and think that you're the, the only ones that offer up to me. But I want you to do it right. Let us go. But ye profane it in that ye say, the table of Yehovah is polluted. Uh -huh. And the fruit thereof, even the food thereof is contemptible. Contemptible, let's go. Ye say also, behold, what a weariness is it. Mm -hmm. And ye have snuffed at it, saith Yehovah of hosts. And he have brought that which was taken by violence. And the lame, and the sick, that she bring the offering. Should I accept this of your hand? Say, say you bring me stuff that you, you did a heist. You just stuck up the truck. You just did a jux. Mm -hmm. And then you bring that and offer it up to me like it's acceptable. You just did wrong to present it to God. Right. Yeah, I'm coming. You know, I, I got, you know what I mean? You know, um, something came through. That's how you, something came through, man. You know, something came through. Something came through. Yeah. You went into the bank and you did a robbery. <laughs> yeah, something came through. You know what I mean? Something nice came through. You know what I mean? I'm going to drop that thousand dollars. Something nice came through. Not thinking that God sees everything. Yah sees everything that we do. So then you want to present that to me? No, nah, I don't accept that. Let us go. But cursed be he that dealeth craftily, whereas he hath in his flock a male, and vow and sacrifice unto your whole a blemished thing. Say, so you got in your flock what the Most High God requires, mm -hmm. but you bring the lame out. Right. And you offer it before the Creator. That's what God is saying. Like the things that we think that we get away with, God sees them. Mm. That's what he's saying. Let's go. For I am a great king, saith your whole host, oh, and my name is feared among the nations. Say, so I'm a great king. Every now and then, you got to let people know who you are. Every now and then, you got to let people know who you, you forgot who I am? Yeah. I said, I'm a great king. Every now and then, you got to flex a little. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Who you, who you think you're talking to? Mm -hmm. you gonna, when somebody get like that, they be humble and whatever. Then hold on, hold on, hold on. Who you think you're talking to? They start, especially in New York, somebody start talking to you like that. Who you think they start talking with their hands? Be careful. Because mm -hmm. them hands is just a distraction. 
The hands is a distraction. Who you, who you think you're talking to? You forgot who I am? I knocked, I knocked your daddy out, boy. <laughs> you cut from the same cloth, I knock you out too. That's, a, that's the kind of talk I heard before. I knocked your father out, I knock you out too. You forgot who I am? Oh, is that Roy Jones song? Y'all must have forgot. <laughs> Y'all must have forgot. <laughs> Y'all must have forgot. <laughs> Fat Joe tells this story. He said when um, he said in the song Lean Back, he said even Roy Jones was caused to lean back. He said he was doing the show. He said next thing you know, he said he's backstage at the show. He said but all his guys is in the crowd. He said and Roy Jones was next to him. <laughs> and that, that was one of those, you must have forgot. Who I am. Like, yo, what was that? Even Roy Jones was called to lean back. He said, Roy, man, it's just a song, man. <laughs> he started copping the plea. It was just a song, man. <laughs> it's a song. You might knock me out, Roy, but my guys is here, Roy. You're not going to come out of here. He, I think he threw that part of the story in there, but it, that's how it gets like that. You got to watch what you do before the creator and what you present to God. Because he does not accept any and everything. He doesn't. That's why he said here, For I am a great king, save your whole host, and my name is feared among the nations. Let's go. Chapter 2, verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now this commandment is for you, O ye priests. If you will not hearken, if you will not lay it to heart, to give glory unto my name, save your whole host. Then will I send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Yea, I curse them because ye do not lay it to heart. Behold. So, mm -hmm. so to the priest, the blessings, Yivareka, Yehovah, Yishmareka, Yair, Yehovah, Penal, Leka, Wikuneka, Yisai, Yehovah, Penal, Leka, Weyasem, Leka, Shalom. May Yehovah bless thee and keep thee. That curse ain't going to be may Yehovah bless thee and keep thee no more. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be may Yehovah curse thee and not keep thee. He's going to reverse the blessing. Why? Because the priest is the connection. The Levites is the connection between God and the people. So if they're not doing right, guess what? Whatever they do is not going to be right. Mm. Their blessings are not going to be a blessing. They're going to be a curse because they're not doing right. So that shows us that the leadership and the leaders of, of places have to do that which is right. Let us go. Behold, I rebuke the seed of your hurt. To see for your hurt, and will spread dung upon your faces, even the dung of your sacrifices, and he shall be taken away unto it. Most I say he's gonna spread the dung of you, the sacrifices you offer to him. Them same vain oblations, them that same short leg animal that you offer to him. He said he's gonna spread their dung in your face. Let's go. Know then that I have sent this commandment unto you, that my covenant might be with Levi. Say if your whole hope. Say my covenant might be with Levi. That was from the beginning of time. That's why we never had an inheritance. That's why when you take on the name or the tribe of Levi, do be able to recite that Torah and be able to break it down to someone and, and make someone understand Torah. Don't just take Levi because, oh, Levi is a popular tribe. No, this is, there's certain things that come with being a Levite. Mm -hmm. Let us go. My covenant was with him of life and peace, and I gave them to him. And a fear, he feared me and was afraid for my name. And he was afraid for my name. That's why it says, when, when Moses said, who's on Yah's side? said, the entire tribe of Levi came over. Because he, they feared me. And they feared my name. Let us go. The law of truth was in his mouth. And unrighteousness was not found in his lips. Unrighteousness was not found in his lips. Let's go. He walked with me in peace and uprightness. Uh -huh. And did turn many away from iniquity. Turn many away from iniquity. That's supposed to be our jobs. When you see wrong being done, you turn people away from that. If you're going to claim the tribe of Levi. And that's all of us. Not just Levi. That's all of us. If we call ourselves Israelites, you see someone doing wrong, you tell them that they're doing wrong. No one is supposed to be telling you about their they adulterous capers and you accept it and, and you sit there and you don't say, hey, man, that's wrong. You know, adultery is wrong. How would you like if somebody did that to you? Somebody took your wife or somebody did this or did that. You, got, you know, like you got to have some courage to tell people when they're wrong. Not, oh, you know, they're going to do what they're going to do anyway. 
But at least you get it off your chest and you could say you told them that they were wrong. Let us go. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge and they should seek the law at his mouth. For he is the messenger of Jehovah's of our oath. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Said so for the priest, lips shall keep knowledge. Call yourself a priest. You always have to be able to give a goodly word to people. And they should seek the law at his mouth. For he is the messenger of Jehovah of hosts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the most high God. Thanking the creator of heaven and earth for life. I took a little bit longer because...